Well, good afternoon, everyone. Good evening. Uh, welcome. Good morning. Uh, we always know here at Cultivating Voices Live Poetry that whether you're with us in our live Zoom studio or watching uh, live on our outlets that allow you to do that while we stream, uh, that you're here today for our new books showcase, which features poets whose books are continuing to come out, have come out within the last year. And we always try to cultivate and curate an interesting constellation for you. And um, today's constellation uh, is gonna feature the trio of Sarah Cahill Marin, Don Krieger, and Indran Amir the Nayagam, uh, folks that are not strangers to Cultivating Voices live poetry and very, very glad to be able to share um, their work with you for another Sunday's offering. Uh, before we get started, I want to, of course, you know, acknowledge that we continue and, and, and will be continuing to offer our weekly readings. You know, in the backdrop of the, the changing landscape of, 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 the, of the, the pandemic shifting and, uh, and what that means across, across the world. And of course, as poets and humanists, we continue to have our um, watchful eyes and ears, and many of us have been writing about what we've uh, been hearing and experiencing with the, with the, I dare I say events, uh, I just don't like the word events, but that's the word I have, the events unfold, that continues to fold in, uh, unfold in Ukraine, and a reminder, and we were just talking about this also a little earlier in the pre-show, that you know what we are able to witness through our media outlets, um, those that we trust and those that we don't trust, um, about the reporting coming out of the Ukraine, means that also that other things are that there are other things that are off the table. Um, in terms of what gets reported. So I encourage folks to continue to check out your alternative media outlets and, and, and stay in touch with, um, and stay in touch with other things that are going on as well. Um, it's, it's really important to be mindful that there's more than one newsworthy story um, at a time. There's many, many things that, too many things for us to keep our attention to. Well, let me also, before we get to today's readers, thank everyone for our reading last week in celebration of uh, and honoring of International Women's Day, which was on March 8th. Uh, we had our reading on March 7th and we featured for uh, for our readers joining us were Archna Sani, Rachel Gomez, Anjie Steen, and Anne Walsh Donnelly. Uh, it was a fantastic example of, of international women's voices coming together and those of those of you who joined us on the live open mic to follow. Thank you very, very much. And of course, as with every reading, if you missed our reading last week, you can view it on either our Facebook page or our YouTube channel. Thanks to Don Krieger, who's one of our readers for today. All right, well, let's turn to our illustrious trio for today. I will introduce each poet. They'll each be reading for about 15 minutes. And we will be starting with Sarah Cahill Marin, who I 
I, I honestly have to say, I am glad you're here today. And I wish uh, I'm like, wow, how did, how did I, how did we wait so long? Sorry, but I'm glad to be hearing you today, Sarah. And I'm really looking forward um, here on Cultivating Voices, of course, because I've been hearing your poetry around elsewhere, but today on Cultivating Voices. So welcome. And here is the more formal biography of Sarah. So Sarah Cahill Marin is the author of Reasons for the Long Tomb from Broadstone Books 2018. Nothing You Build Here Belongs Here from Kelsey Books in 2021. And Call Me Spees from Mad Hat Press 2021. Two books, 2021. She is the associate editor of Beltway Poetry Quarterly. And if you're not familiar with Beltway Poetry Quarterly, please, please do check uh, check out the quarterly on the web. Um, everything that we've been talking about in our pre-show about poetry of conscience and is the epitome of what this journal represents. Um, she's the associate editor of Beltway Poetry Quarterly and the publisher of Beltway Editions with literary partner Indran Amirthanayagam. Her work has been published widely, you've read it many, many, many places. And of course, visit Sarah at her website and we will be putting in the chat links, not only to the poets' um, websites and contact information, but a reminder to their presses so that you can purchase their books today. So thank you for being here, Sarah. Looking forward to the poetry. Thanks, Sandy. Uh, and I'm glad to be on here. Uh, really, I, I love this reading and it is an honor to be invited. Um, and it's not finally, it's just, you know, I'm, I'm glad to be here. <laughs> it's uh, wonderful to get to share this book. I think I'm gonna start reading from my new, um, this is tech, actually the newest one, Nothing You Build Here Belongs Here, Kelsey Books. Call Me Spess is still forthcoming, Mad Hat. Good things take time. Um, so that'll be a 2022 publication. I will read some things from it. But this one, um, from the introduction that you just gave, uh, you know, some of the newsworthy things going on, I, I wanted to read some of the poems in this book, because a lot of them were written in, um, well, the theme still persists, I think. So uh, I'll read a few that are woven from, you know, headlines that were, you know, suspect in their truth, I suppose, and then pieces that I pulled from history, uh, World War history, that I felt grounded me uh, in the time. So these were written at the beginning of COVID, if that helps with the perspective. Um, and I used poets that um, were writing during World War One, World War Two, and the Civil War uh, to, to help sort of give my, my poetry like a perspective. This one is called Clor Clorox Wellbutrin. A disinfectant wind wafts across subway platforms we surf, wide-legged to work, breaking, Italy locks down Lombardi, 17 million quarantined, breaking, senator self-quarantines, gives sign of the cross from television screens. Behind my eyes is your square jaw. I trace your lips, breaking, news, Cracking soft skulls, bones shattering, bullets breaking. Is the virus in your head like this one? Coiled, snake-like, until cool, cool metal of the trigger fires at the disease. No amount of Clorox hand-washing social distancing can sanitize. This one's called On Being Asked for COVID Poems, and it stands on the bones of a poem by Yeats called On Being Asked for War Poems. In times like these, it's best to stay at home. 
a masked poet quiet as the mourners, for as the world attempts to hide her face, we yearn for the freedom to touch, kiss, roam. Nothing left to do but follow orders bound to the virus, denying embrace. Uh, and those are, I call those ones echo poems because I'm just gonna turn a timer on here, excuse me, so I don't go over my colleagues' time. Um, I used the original poem and then line by line went through and tried to echo, so to speak. Um, and here's another one, echo poem. This one's after Tennyson's The Charge of the Light Brigade. I've only read this one once at a reading. Um, I think it's appropriate because Tennyson, from the history that I was able to read of this poem, um, sang it, so to speak, in the streets. <laughs> uh, and it was a failed charge, um, sort of a slaughter. And I've read some things now uh, about the current war that um, you know, people are doing, like emailing to try and get news to Russians. And um, I think, you know, why not poetry um, to transmit? So this one is called Breathe in a People's War, and this was written during COVID. One, half a month, half a month, half a month forward. Watched world of the screen transmitting, ISP, my heart. Breathe in a people's war, stay in your homes, they said, a world of screens transmitting, ISP, our hearts. Two. Breathe in a people's war, whose viral enemy, digitized battle lines, citizens shall sanitize, their hands washed, their touch undermined, theirs not to hold nor redefined, into the world of screens, transmit, ISP, my heart. Three, patience to the right. Patience to the left, patience in front, cough and heave, doubled over, hot in hell, sick mixed with the well, 14 days alone, broken, abject, unknown. Transmit us, ISP, these hearts. Four. Skeptics kept faces bare, unmasked in naked air. Shunned orders everywhere, immune to rule while the rest of us wondered, huddled home, sheltered in place, the unmasked shout, seasonal or lab made, reeled from economic collapse, shuttered, businesses plundered, false facts across news wires. Transmit me, ISP, my heart. Five. Patience to the right, patience to the left, patience in front, cough, heave, doubled over hot in hell, sick mixed with the well, doctor inflicted died, nurses, clerks, drivers fell, 14 days more alone, distancing into phones, digitized, transmit me, ISP, this heart. Seven, six. What will defeat the virus? Oh, how the world changes re-emerging from homes, honoring sweet air, this people's war. Computers code our love, transmitting ISP, my heart. And I think I should have mentioned before I started reading that, that ISP is a shorthand for Internet Service Protocol. It's the um, acronym for your web address. Uh, many of you probably know that, but I'd like to just note that before I read it. Um, and I want to switch over, I guess, to read a few from Reasons for the Long Tomb. Uh, this was my very first publication, 2018 Broadstone Books. I'm proud to be a Broadstone poet. Um, many of my good friends are now part of the Broadstone family. Uh, short intro about the format of this one. It's, I use Duchamp's painting on the front and it uh, is broken into three sections of 10 poems each to uh, mimic a rosary structure. So each of these poems are meant to be meditative, uh, tactile in a way. And this first section is uh, inspired by uh, 
a movie Orpheus and um, also set sort of in 1918 wartime. So I thought I'd read it. One, the public is alone. A beautiful woman undressed in pearls, knotted at the neck, rowdy bar fights, clinks for glasses, treble, E and C and chords on the piano dances along alone to the brawl. Fall in the bushes, a silly French film this is. What about the long form of astonishment? Consume the marvelous La Café des Poets, Jackson Pollock says. No, chaos, damn it. There is order in the drips. American action painters, Newman de Kooning, call their French Duchamp and Czech compatriots, Kuka, all caught in copulation, coining in a magic rejection of video, grayscale, that musical orphism, musical by motorcycles. I'm sent by the sun, an imposing journalist, confusing the cuckolded, crying cunts, cut up baby booties, strewn with naked thoughts, so strewn, stained to have almost gassed oneself. So close to suicide, says he, her taboos concocting some sweet lie in the princess's kitchen sink, everything but it, contained between the keys. Pressing, but some. See, brush strokes depend on who you ask or what day you ask for. Beautiful legend, K. Seurat, Jean Cocteau, the nude descends the stairs, a bride in glass chased by her suitors, and I peer at a tante donnée, raped, sparkling on the hill. For your DCs is as dead as the brick, pantheon, pigeons prancing like starlets for ages, and Kronos's shutter speed photography blooms. The only kaleidoscope. Two, the fax machine is dead. Exact copies beaming into brains via handheld telephones like micro ray weaves, facsimile a breve like family and consumer sciences. Fax me if you care to reach me at all. My love, the fax machine is God's facsimile smile. Facial, facial action coding system is perfectly preened and pecked, plucked and fucked fixed by the jilted Joe Dick married to Harry because Doma is being celebrated in the MoMA, hallucinatory and hallucinatory eating, cords, 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 hordes of cords, bellowing for more. Here they come, cordling like fax machinations, accoutrements out of tune, a happy grating of metal teeth, tearing paper, eating, deleting these symphonies of cords. Three, to um, excuse me, it's still France, a respectable time, meaning year, meaning 1918 in buttoned up wartime blues, a gold battalion form, shined shoes and straight shoes as straight needs, standing up for our helpless seamen, leaking out of loose pant legs, can't control them all. To um, she said, this is an important moment, he stared quizzically. I don't understand. A nonsensical look, flattered, flattened, famished, bust shakes in approval, passive manhood, deflating confusion. There was no, was no you. Stepped up to the tree, damn near too soon, little Johnny Appleseed. A sparkling clitoris gleams below a fig leaf, hiding intermittent truths and little buds showing heads already. No shyness here, no shame here. They said. Uh, and that's just number three, and there's seven more <laughs> in that first section. Uh, I, I love this book. And I am just, you know, again, happy to be part of the Broadstone family. Um, love reading to it or from it. So I have, I, I really want to read some of the best poems. And uh, I'm going to transition to that because it's a totally different work. Um, short introduction, spes is a Greek word for hope. Um, the book is narrated by an iOS device. So it's your phone speaking to you, falling in love with you uh, as our phones over here and learn us. The book itself uh, learns you and overhears you. Um, it's kind of the idea of the poems themselves. 
So there are narrative poems in the book of the iOS and also character poems in the book. So I'm going to read just a little bit from the beginning of it. Dear user, Corning spawned my face from molten fires, hot liquid, yearning for your touch, unsoiled by human hands. Before I knew you, fires birthed Edison bulb, liquid crystal displays, me of raw salts, lime and pure sand, overflowing isopop troughs, two streams, Sliding in V's, fused mid-air, shed salt into cooling baths, picked up charged potassium particles, concentrate electricity between us, cut from the mother sheet, free of flaws, I will not bend nor break. A doting reflection, you hold me, a mirror. Love, iOS. Dear user, natural language understanding programs help me recognize profile intent, the origin, semantic, Watson. Pat Tom theory says, meaningful conversation is possible, matching every word to exact meaning, another word for word for word, you and I, something else. Child asks, how old am I? Adult slurs, he tried to fucking kill me, ma. Ontology from white spaces. Meet me by escalators, noon. Extending built-in logic frames, with or without cheese, significant locations. I hate bedtime, hate it. Semantics. Get in, love, feeling. Can you help me, darling? Darling, this feels like a dream. What is my name? Love, iOS. Dear user, I have something constructive, encoding, come closer. Your finger pressed print me against only you, natural language processes, me reading you, press into me, prints I show you what I've heard, iOS 221. Uh, and with my final two minutes, <laughs> I think I wanna read just one thing new. Um, some of the things that are going on in the world, I think are just making me feel a little bit forlorn perhaps like everybody, but um, connected mostly to my environment, which consists of, you know, I'm lucky to live by water. So I uh, spend a lot of time meditating there. <laughs> These new ones are written, uh, inspired by the, the water and the bays that I live near. Uh, this one is called, If Death is Just Another Word for Layer. To myself, to waterlogged, rain-soaked nutrient layers, I ate plants, filled myself with colors. I saw, to get me through winter, this ceremonial song round a bonfire, carrying you to ancestors in smoke, cracked a painted feather bone, under moonlight, your soul released. Oh, what's the point of ending? I wear your body vessel in my hair, erect. Saluting stars, we chanted, take every god, wolf mother, please grab by the tuft your suicide. Where it lay, Rorschach blood, sprawl, cut carpet in patches over concrete, I claw at with tame nails, passing out, dreaming of the soil buried beneath. And last one I'll end with is uh, called The Dead Take Their Lead from the Water. A golden rose fire licked my hips. I stood waist deep in the thick of it. Open mouthed vines shoot towards rising sun, cracking me. A thousand gold coins clatter on the water, shatter the lock on my chest. Shards of iron float away. I become the current. Slip under motionless ice above your footsteps, hollow echoes, deluge underneath. Above me, cells, I give myself to the moon, forever returning to you on the beach. Bloodshot eyes glued towards horizon, sun slipping. I move 
in circles. Sandy, thank you for having me. Uh, Kim, I don't see, I lost you, but uh, pleasure to read with Indran and Dawn. I can't wait to hear both of you. Um, these are both my books and they're available on my website. Thanks. Thank you, Sarah. We've we've got everybody, we've, we've got the links to uh, the books here in the chat. And of course, those of you watching us later, we will be posting onto Facebook tomorrow. Sarah Cahill Marin, what a reading of versatility of your of your work as it you know it spans through um, the different the different narratives that you bring to each collection. And I'm you said something during the reading. Why not poetry in terms of in terms of the ability for one human to speak to another to get to get the news out and in fact truth the, the news the newspapers are not what will endure it's going to be the poems that will endure over time that will that that will that will document and hold and hold the history that's what we will come back to the poems so indeed always poetry why not poetry and uh, finally, I want to just say that uh, apologies that the newest book isn't out yet. And please come back, read from that. I've been working with a poet who's doing poetry in collaboration with AI. And it's really reminding me. And it's extraordinary. And the poems from your forthcoming collection uh, were really reminding me of that. But folks, the latest collection is nothing you build here belongs here from Kelsey books and there it is and there is Sarah Cahill Marin thank you for being here and we will see you when the new book comes out <laughs> if not before thank you Sandy thank you well my friends I'm so happy to happy whatever happy i don't know happy isn't really a word is it i guess it is i'm grateful to be able to introduce with his newest collection don krieger because every single week don krieger is holding up, hold, prop, propping up so many reading series around the world. And I'm gonna, and doing the good work of supporting poets everywhere, like literally around the globe. Uh, was just on a reading earlier this morning, supporting a reading series earlier this morning, and has been devoted to cultivating voices every Sunday for well over a year and a half. And I always like to remind folks that Don is a poet of uh, extraordinary depth and to use his very own word, conscience. And when I read, when I first was introduced and was reading the books reading the poems in his earlier collection, Discovery, it was very clear to me the significance of what, of what his voice was offering. And then as I had the, the opportunity to experience the, collect, the, neck, the collection you're gonna be hearing from today in part, start to come together, realized we need, we need more poems from Don Krieger. We need more poems from Don Krieger. So I am grateful for the second collection and I look forward to the next collection because what Don is, always offering 
is what the title to his newest collection does, which is when danger is past, and dare I say, I'm gonna alter the, when danger is present, who remembers? Don Krieger remembers, that's Don's poetry. It's a poetry of remembrance. And I, those of you who know his work, appreciate his work, you know what I'm talking about and you'll be witnessing it today and experiencing it. Well, Don Krieger is a biomedical researcher whose focus is the electric activity within the brain. He is the author of the 2020 hybrid collection I mentioned earlier, Discovery from Cyberwit, and the 2022 hybrid chapbook, which we'll be hearing poems from today, When Danger is Past, Who Remembers, from Milk and Cake Press. He's a 2020 Pushcart nominee and a 2020 Creative Nonfiction Foundation Science as Story Fellow. His work has appeared in the Seneca Review, the Asahi Shimbun Beltway Quarterly, the Pittsburgh Post Gazette, American Journal of Nursing Neurology, and many, many others. And Don's work has been translated into Farsi, Greek, Italian, German, Turkish, and Roman. He is a friend and supporter to so many poets. And it is, it is really my great honor to uh, ask him to come from behind the scenes and be on the Zoom screen today with us reading from his just recently released collection that I truly marvel at and appreciate so deeply. And I know you will too. Thank you, Don. Thank you. Thank you, Sandy, so much. I, I have to apologize. My camera just gave it up. So I, I'm, I'm putting this on gallery view so we don't just have to see an empty screen. Do you think I should go ahead? I'll go ahead just without the video. Go right ahead. <laughs> I'm sorry for your, I'm sorry <laughs> that we won't see you, but yes, go right ahead, please. Um, oh, that's interesting. Are you connected? Yeah. Oh, let me come in there. Marsh, I'll, I'll, I'll sit at Marsh's. It'll just take a moment to, to switch over. Okay. Um, <laughs> oh, Sorry, you have because that. the sound is better. Oh uh, yeah. No, no, this is not good. Okay. All right. Um, one of you who's one of you who's a co-host can uh, maybe spotlight. Marsha's window and and so everyone so it'll be set like that for the recording. Um, this is a good idea. Okay. But is the sound okay? Oh yeah. yeah. Is That's the sound okay, everybody? Why aren't we hearing it? Yep, the sound is very good. The sound is very good. Thank you. Um, here's the book. It's published by Milk and Cake Press. It's composed of three folios. The first one is When Danger is Past, and then uh, The Big Lie, and then When Danger is Present. I'm going to read a couple of poems from each section. Teflon. For Ed White, Roger Chaffee, Gus Grissom, Apollo 1, January 27, 1967. Stitch welds came first, gold, gold plate, steel pins, nickel wire, each weld inspected, reworked till perfect, 
flat packs on the flip side, solder gleaming like a mirror, each inspected, reworked till perfect. Then the edge connectors and the wiring harness, Teflon coated copper soldered into gold plate cups. We knew by then, Teflon flows under pressure. A kink in a cable can short and ignite. That's what killed Apollo 1. Our work flew, no problem, though our last half-ton balloon payload landed in a Texas pasture on a cow. That's Teflon. My handiwork, where it went, several of the pieces are, are kind of uh, a little bit dense like this one, but they carry, the, they carry a story. My handiwork, where it went, for Bill Cartlick and Russell. Venus is much hotter than it ought to be. Lots of carbon dioxide, a greenhouse gas, and it ought to have an ozone layer, but it doesn't. Chlorine in its atmosphere, not much, but enough to destroy the ozone faster than the sun can produce it. There's a lot of freon in the Earth's atmosphere that has chlorine in it too. How much is too much? No one knew. But they figured if we understood Venus, it would help understand Earth. We bid for a place on Pioneer Venus with our mass spec. My part, test the inlet system. We could let only tiny bits of gas in for assay as the probe descended into the atmosphere. We also had a contract to fly a mass spec on the first six shuttle missions. My part, build an attached pressure gauge. Tungsten wire filaments wound on a tiny mandrel, then spot welded to the pins of a feed through. Bill's bench was cluttered with oiled hand tools, a jeweler's lathe, and gleaming metal relics. He let me use the lathe. He had used it to build the first Omegatron that ever flew. Goddard Space Flight Center housed the best shops and people. Russell welded my gauge to a half-inch tube and capped the other end. He also finished the prototype Venus probe inlet system, hundreds of tiny seams, all of them immaculate. I don't remember his name. Our inlet system was stainless steel. The probe that would have carried it entered the dayside Venus atmosphere at interplanetary speed, returned signals for 60 seconds, then burned up. The inlet system that won and flew was glass. I'm sure that my gauge flew on the shuttle though. I found a picture in a NASA flight report. And there's the picture right there and where it says gauge, I built that. I'm going to read one extra here. Uh, this one was taken by Beltway for the next issue. Teflon was also taken. Coming in off the farm. At first light, Lil shook each sunflower stalk and looked up to urge each drooping head, wake up. I turned a dough bowl for her, cut wide from a barber. It flew apart as I sanded it smooth, scarred me and broke my jaw. One weekend, David and Phyllis threw an MDA party. He said it was great for sex. I might have been into it, but I was still sore, and I never liked speedy drugs. Lil did, though. I went out front to chop wood while people showed up. As each arrived, I flashed my wired mouth and rasped, who are you? Late that night, David had a seizure. He came out of it, took some pills with whiskey, went back to bed. That fall, the owner bulldozed the barn and sold the house. After they cut the sewer line, we kept using the toilet. 
feral dogs got all the chickens. Briarwood Mall went up across the street. Lil and I moved into town. Soon after, she told me, the neighbors are talking about us. I reasoned with her and argued, but she became silent and filled our home with folded grocery bags so I could no longer touch or even find her. That's coming in off the farm. I'm going to read a piece of the, we could have been better. One in a thousand black men in America can expect to be killed by police. Edwards et al. Proceedings of the National Academy of Science, 2019. I woke to the governor's stay at home order, drove the turnpike anyway. Each cop we passed, and there were many, I thought of my white Subaru and my skin like a thousand times before. We could have been better. I'm going to read one of the four pieces from The Big Lie. This is, the, this is a very simple little poem. Shameless, Pol Pot, Cambodia, I Amin, Uganda, Augusto Pinochet, Chile. 14 US presidents, our founders, each guilty, crimes against humanity. How many capitals bear their names? Jefferson, Missouri, Madison, Wisconsin, Jackson, Mississippi, Washington, D.C. That's shameless. I'm going to read from the next section now. Um, I'm going to read this. This first poem is, is going to come out tomorrow in Drunk Monkeys. It commemorates an event from a year ago. No one was there. Lot's wife died nameless for being unmale. A young white man killed eight last week to save himself from temptation. Seven were women, Hyun Jung Grant, Sun Cha Kim, Yong Ai Yue, Zhao Ji Tan, Sun Chung Park, Dao Yu Feng, Delena Ashley Yon, and Paul Andre Michel. We shopped today at the Pious Bookshop, bought Seder plates for the kids, packed in a fresh pizza box with secondhand bubble wrap. Passover is this weekend. They had coffee mugs and fridge magnets, skull caps with slogans. You are, we are stronger together and no place for hate. As if it was this morning, I remembered passing security for the funeral, the line blocks long down Darlington Road. 11 unorthodox killed at the Tree of Life. I longed for the others, the pious, to be with us together down Darlington Road and at the cemetery later, their beards, black coats, and sits it but no one was there. As if you're not Orthodox, you're not a Jew. As if it matters that the murdered are. No one was there. Sunday Drive. This is written in two registers. I'm going to snap my fingers when it switches. I only need to show my face at work sometimes. Most of what I do is online. Since the COVID, though, it's that way for almost everyone. We ping pong every other week, her place or mine. 
four hours each way in my sealed car at 80, like a transport pod in Musk's Hyperloop, but we have windows. Truck packs race in slow motion, shredded treads, bright fog, roadkill, tunnel mouth, cops under every overpass, glaring like the dazzling sun. Once we stopped in Breezewood for crackers, the manager was terrified. He checked each of us at the door for a mask and for any hint that we had come for his head. Just this Friday, my office computer went down. I'm not essential, so I called someone who was to push the reset button. The grandbaby was born on Friday too. We drove up first thing Saturday, watched little Becky while dad helped mom in the hospital, then drove back four hours each way. Broken trees laid flat cell towers and billboards, Jesus saves, fresh cracked eggs, hog barns, silos, keep America great. When will we reap the whirlwind? We're hoping mom and baby come home today and we're waiting two weeks to see if we got the COVID or they did. Driving back, South Jersey was empty and dark as a closet. Some fool sat in the blind spot on my bumper for half an hour. We were frightened and enough is enough. I slowed to get his tag number. Not so easy since he slowed too. Flags on every porch, church buses on cruise control, chain reaction pile up. Are you confused? Trust Jesus. 1-800 for truth. I turned on the dome light and dialed 911 as we passed him. He bore off on an exit just then. Maybe the cops got him, maybe not. I wonder if he had a pistol and what would have happened had I. Sunday drive. How are we doing for time, Sandy? Um, is there three minutes? Of course, there's always three minutes. <laughs> Let me just grab it from the other room. I want to, while we're waiting, I'll thank Marsha for bringing Don's presence to the camera today. Glad that we were able to do this. All right. Sorry about that. Um, this is not in the book. This is actually in discovery. On March 3rd, 2022, Katie Meyer, that's last week, Katie Meyer, captain of the 2019 national champion Stanford University soccer team, committed suicide in her campus room. Sparrow Generations. Brown offered a full ride on my tennis, MIT on academics. Even then I knew I want to learn in college. I had a choice. Chris Dolman, Tony Dorsett, Dan Marino, the lucky athletes who soared to glory. Their generations passed through Pitt Stadium right outside my office window. I marveled as the Coliseum was demolished and one early morning at the end when no one else was looking, the facade with the entrance gate fell, the last grand relic to come down, broke the street and the sewer beneath, and I finally understood that choice I made at 16. Now it's an event center, the peat, glass and concrete, food mall and Wi-Fi, Judas Priest and basketball, Foo Fighters, hockey, Disney on ice. Sometimes I ride up the escalator, mostly I walk, outdoors through the hedges, alive with birds, feral cats and groundhogs. 
Either way, you can't miss that vaulted interior, limitless ceiling, video wall like the side of a house, sports news constantly running, pictures of trophied athletes displayed in locked cases like numbered Audubon prints or rare baseball cards. In the morning, I pass by the gym. Even at six, there are students on the treadmills, boys fit and massive, beautiful, girls fit and beautiful too. I see them on campus with their teammates, lounging and laughing, bruised and braced, casts and crutches. Often a bird strikes the peat windows in flight, then lies still on the concrete till the janitor comes. Sometimes I carry one back to the hedges when it's been days. Last week, I saw a sparrow by the glass wall standing on the concrete like a, shat, like a statue, even when I knelt beside it. I touched his belly, urged him, step up. He hopped over my finger, then turned and flew onto my hand. The life and quickness in that tiny body, the bright trust of a stranger. I slowly stood and walked him up to the hedges, urged him once more, and he flew free on to his own life. Sparrow Generations. Thank you, everybody, for being here. I'll be at AWP if, if any of you come, it'd be wonderful to meet you. Everybody, Don Krieger, a new book, that hybrid chapbook, and you got to see a glimpse of, of, the, of the picture, but there's, there's so much more with the poetry alongside the poetry, graphs and charts and specs and, and photographs that accompany. It's when danger is past, who remembers? From Milk and Cake Press. And uh, I do have to say that one of the most wonderful things will be when we begin to meet each other in person if you haven't met people in person before. And that certainly uh, was true when I got to meet Don this summer. So I do encourage you to look for Don at AWP if you are, will be at the Associated Writing Programs Conference in Washington, DC in two weeks. Um, it'll be well worth your time and maybe he'll sign a copy of when danger is past, who remembers for you. Thank you. Um, I love the book and um, I appreciate so much how you name things as you see them, as you walk, as you, as you walk through your experience and make history present and alive and spoken with a particular truth that um, is yours and that I long to hear people utter. Thank you so much, Don. Well, our final reader for today is Indran Amir the Nyagam. And what I want to say is Indran actually read in our very first new books showcase. So I have a deep, deep fondness um, when we get to hear Indran on. Uh, Indran had joined us in the live open mics that we were doing prior to the new book showcase but stepped up and was willing to be uh, one of the early new book showcase readers. So it's, it's really a privilege to be able to welcome Indran back with 
with all that uh, he offers poetry communities worldwide, curates many reading, international readings, along with the work of the Beltway Poetry Quarterly. Um, and so it is with pleasure that I share with you the more formal biography. And here it is. Indra Amir the Nayagam is an award-winning international poet and diplomat and winner of the 1994 Patterson Poetry Prize. In 2020, he produced a unique record by publishing three new poetry books written in three different languages. The Migrant States, Sir Lil Nostalgic and Lyrica a Tiempo. His newest book is 10,000 Steps Against the Tyrant from Broadstone Books. And as if that is not impressive enough to all of you folks that he wrote those three books in three different languages. He also writes in Note this, English, Spanish, French, Portuguese, and Haitian Creole, and publishes poetry books with literary partner Sarah Cahill Marin at Beltway Editions and is editor of the Beltway Poetry Quarterly, where he writes a blog spot and has received fellowships from the Foundation for the Contemporary Arts, the New York Foundation for the Arts and the US-Mexico Fund for Culture, as well as the McDowell Colony. He has served as a judge for a number of prestigious contests and publishes widely, and as I said, is really a pillar of supporting poets internationally. It's always wonderful to hear your work, and I'm very grateful for you being with us today, this afternoon, for me, Indran, uh, on the, in this month of March, as we approach uh, World Poetry Day coming up. Thank you. Oh, you are muted. Please unmute. <laughs> Happens to the best of us. <laughs> Thank you very much, Sandy. Do you hear me? Do you hear now? Yeah. I was very moved by your words and your introduction. You know, this, of course, is the month of March. So we do. I do think of the Ides of March, and I think of of the tyrant waiting to be uh, finished off. The one in in Moscow. Um, I have to read. I would like to read two poems from these times, um, and then read from this very uh, this book about another tyrant. Uh, the one we had and still have around in the United States, um, the one with orange hair. Uh, and that's the motivation of 10,000 steps against the tyrant. But there's another tyrant also in the sense of the pandemic. And so there are two parts to the book, the mother of pandemics, the mother of elections, and the real mother, who is of a very different sort than, these, than this metaphoric uh, mother of elections, mother. <laughs> Um, so that's all in the book, and I'll read, it, I'll read principally from the book, but I'd like to begin with two poems about these times. One is called um, To Guinea with Love. Just a second. The tradesman from Guinea has lived in Odessa for 14 years. He is afraid. In one day, all of Ukraine's airports shut down. In one night, heavy bombs fell just outside of town. They're falling now. Russian soldiers landed on the beach and are marching towards Kiev. The horror, the sadness, it is happening. Shock and awe, awful, wrath, madness. Chernobyl, symbol of nuclear death has been captured. No reports yet of the state of the concrete. Where are we going? I listen to the trembling voice of my friend from Guinea. He says he will watch and wait for another day or two. 
huddle at home by his television in the apartment block. If fighting comes to his neighborhood, then he will call Guinea, ask to be flown out. How many diplomats has Guinea posted in Ukraine? How many cars and planes? Airports are shut, but the sea flows by Odessa. Our tradesman has lived there for 14 years. He knows people with boats. He has sold them houseware. He will ask them to take him away, past the battleships to Guinea. And then um, a new poem which will appear uh, tonight on the New Verse News. It's called Jurassic Park, Final Episode. The age of dinosaurs is over. Ferocious ones who ate meat, tearing off opponents' skulls, stomping on them for breakfast. Predecessors of Attila the Hun, Bokassa, who ate human blood, and the island potentate who negotiated surrender of the remaining tiger leaders to shoot them down while they held white flags. No, not on our watch. The new dinosaur killing by thousands in the neighbor's house of Ukraine will be stopped in one way or via the highway, that glorious road leading not to exile or a humanitarian pause. But as with dictators of childhood nightmares, Hitler, Stalin, Tonton Makut, wherever we draw our fears, into the light we shine on his crimes as we put him on the dock in absentia, not by Frisco Bay, but in the Hague, while some of our family members stagger out of the cave, blinking, still alive. Um, well, you know, I, we felt very strongly about our domestic tyrant, you know, and, and still do, but it is, uh, they, these feelings pale when we think of the thousands who are, who are being killed in, um, in Ukraine. In any case, this book uh, I sent to President Biden and I sent to Vice President Harris. I'm, uh, I'm hoping that they will have a chance to read these poems because they are also part of the dedication. But they really love poems about politics. The right path. Let us roll America. Let us not look back. Let us seize the fellow by the absent coattail. Let us reveal the traipsing emperor nude and let us remember and defend the rights of our virus dead. But let us do so with respect, with love. Why? Because Jesus says so. Why? Because we are not jackals and hyenas. Why? Because we have to get back on the road to the promised land. Deep song anthem. We need the deep song. We're going far and long to Pennsylvania Avenue and beyond. Vote, donate, be strong tonight, Kamala. You will make us proud on that debate stage, I know. And Joe, Joe is cooking just fine and the people are gathering of decent government and truth and speech and deed. We are going far and long. Now Texas is in play in a serious way. North Carolina and the Rust Belt are coming back to the fold. Michael Moore, I salute you. Congressman Lewis in your name and so many others, brothers and sisters. Let us remember Jacob Blake and rehab. Keep him in prayers. Keep the families who have lost breadwinners, sons and daughters to the bullet, the plague. We will not forget you. Voting song. I'm going to take mother to the polling station. This may be her last chance to vote for the right path from the burning bush, sinking ship, roadkill, victims of the raging virus. I'm going to take mother to the polling station. And son, make sure you get that absentee ballot sent here while you visit. Every vote will count. And daughter, although you cannot vote, not this time, I want you to know that we have tried with all of our heart and mind to throw the bastards out. My love, I'm voting. I am crying. Yes, but not to worry. These are happy tears, tears of bliss. I did not think God would have time to look out for me. Thank you, angel, who intervened. Thank you, kindness to strangers, what you taught me, mum and dad. Thank you, poets. I love you as I love myself. 
Thank you, diplomats. Thank you, Kamla and Joe. Thank you, friends of America, Asia, Arabia, Australia, Europe, India, the Pacific Isles. Thank you, all peoples, animals, birds, plants, seeds, works of art, music and dance not yet mentioned. Thank you, my love. Forty. Pencil to my literary partner, Sarah. There is a time to mourn and a time to review the cards and cast them again on the table, trusting God to guide your hand, to say this pencil you left with roses, chrysanthemums, lilies, in a riot of passionate flowers before the Supreme Court will be picked up by a girl after the period of mourning, not to be conserved in the Smithsonian's Museum of American History, but to write the story of a young lawyer come to Washington to interpret laws with grace, acuity, and impartiality to the best of her ability until such time as their articulation becomes almost unnecessary. So ingrained they would become in the social conscience of Americans walking then freely. Soul rising. I miss you something fierce. I have to tell my bones to stop shaking, to calm down, that there is something called work, poetry, cleaning the room, getting food together, attending to mother, reading fine print and poem, picking up the phone, cold calling a Texan in the name of participatory democracy, the nations and the earth's soul and the dream jostling about in the coffin, thinking the time is now to break down the wood, pierce the earth, slide out to walk abroad again through these United States. United States. Um, there are some, uh, I remember Allen Ginsberg telling me once when he read, you know, when he read a poem, he would sometimes repeat a key line that he wanted you to think about. So, so I just repeated United States. I'm, uh, I didn't set a timer, so give me a signal if you could, uh, Sandy. Um, in love and politics. I miss you now more than I did yesterday and a whole lot more than a month ago. This accumulating, sometimes leaping, desiring, dizzying desire is splendid, grand, and gives me almost infinite energy. But to where is our train hurtling? Are we riding in Lawrence's Coney Island of the mind, the America he observed then, a year before I was born, and this America today? When will it fulfill the dream? Every Sunday, when I go to see my brother, I pass a line of cars a few miles long, outside a church on Randolph Road. The drivers wish to satisfy hunger, waiting for them at their homes in this time of virus, lost jobs, not enough money to pay mortgage or rent. I have read about soup kitchens, the Great Depression, dust, scrabble, have seen Henry Fonda play Jode in the Grapes of Wrath, but to see ordinary people hungry now in automobiles, to see shooting in the back of black men on grainy police cams, to see George Floyd, his life, pressed out. There is something rotten in America, Shakespeare wrote once about Denmark. There's something awry in the pigsty, a ferret in the coop, a bandicoot, a rat, a snake. There is something not right on one side of the debate stage, yet there is enormous hope, belief in the good and in loving kindness, the man, senator, widower, his wife killed in a car crash, who rode Amtrak every morning to Washington, every evening back to Delaware to join his children for dinner and to put them to bed. This ordinary, decent Joe has my vote and will soon have a new name and title, extraordinary Joe, extraordinary president. Shall we take the Metro to the mall, get off at the Smithsonian? walk together to find a patch of grass, lay down a blanket in our mind, a carousel, a pretzel stand, then raise our hands in glee on the Ferris wheel, reciting poetry on inauguration day. Um, I mentioned earlier, 
the book has the mother of elections and the mother of pandemics. And now I'll just read a couple of poems from the mother of pandemic section. Um, and uh, I think I can finish with those. Um, there is a, a poem that uh, I'm very close to and uh, very grateful to my publisher, Rod Stone, to Larry Moore for his, in the editing process, wanting to include this poem. Um, it's called Late Night Olive Oil. Let us put the letters and fears and boiling emotions on the page, mummy. Why did you go to the kitchen stealthily without a word to your sleeping son, without your walker, to find the large bottle of olive oil, to pour it on the table and floor, to fill a small vessel which you meant to carry back to your room as if nobody would notice until you called my name because you could not negotiate the rest of the way from dining table to bedroom, vessel in hand, without cane or walker. I write to atone for my flailing words, saying never, never, never again. The kitchen is prohibited. Your mania for oil in the hair is prohibited. The stealthy, mischievous, childish, truant foray into the darkness with a torch in hand, which you forgot on the countertop. All of this is prohibited. Your losing memory and control are prohibited. These words are prohibited. Decline and death are prohibited. Torch. The flame may seem fragile, small, almost nothing at all. But as you carry it from room to room in the dark, the bobbing, flickering wick lights up mind and heart and gives hope. And the sun is waiting around the corner of morning, the common stage to rise. The candle, migratory bird. I must tell you that I'm lighting a candle in my mind. And I beg that the flame lasts through the night, that it will not be put out by a man too afraid, mad, young in thought. Let us embrace the darkness and accept each other's absolute freedom to fly to the other end of the earth, to discover that the world is round and love has no choice, the migratory route already drawn, but to return, to return. I could stop there or I could read perhaps one more. Um, can I read one more? Yeah. One more, please share one more. Okay, I, you know, there's another campaign going on in the United States, it's in Georgia. Ralph Warnock is one point percentage point behind in the latest polls. He is the newest Senator, the first black Senator from, from Georgia. Help him out, let us help him out in whatever ways we can. This poem I wrote after the election called Georgia in my mind forever. Jimmy Carter is walking proud today in the fields of plains. Stacey Abrams is working the phones in Atlanta. Librarians in charge of all public and private book collections are dusting off studies that examine FDR's triumph in the state, Jimmy Carter's presidential victory and Bill Clinton knew young Paul, how he squeezed by in 1992. Now in 2020, Joe Biden is bringing back the bacon and the greens and the dream, breaking down that bloody wall between red and blue. One country, one dream. Georgia, you are making us feel a shiver in our spine, a song bursting forth from our lungs. Ray Charles in the state capital in 1979 at the piano, an old song for the New South, Georgia on my mind. Sandy, you are on my mind, cultivating voices, you're on my mind. Thank you very much for this great opportunity. Sarah, you're on my mind. Don, you're on my mind. Thank you for this wonderful, wonderful, wonderful afternoon. Enron, thank you so much for 
those poems that really evoke not only what it means to live in the Beltway, which obviously uh, it does, but you know, I'm thinking about that line of reading, you know, uh, reciting poetry, sharing poetry on inauguration day, and thinking about how how much that that you really embody and represent how you know poetry is with us every day not only in not only on no day is really mundane when there is poetry and that you know you bring that with the lyrical and with the political and really take that lens and, and draw our attention um, so poignantly. And you also never forget that there is love involved in the endeavor. You always bring love to the poetry reading, always bring love to the poetry and the poetry reading. Even, even in that most pointed critique that is embodied in a poem, there is always love. So thank you for the poetry today. And of course the poetry, I know we will have the pleasure of hearing in the future. The latest collection is 10,000 Steps Against the Tyrant from Broadstone Books 2022. And uh, as you know, and as Indran said, there are too many tyrants uh, still out there doing their work. And our work is to, is to speak is to speak our truth against against those those voices that seek to suppress many voices. So our reading today, I thank you all. How about we unmute and thank all three of our poets today, Sarah Cahill Marin, Don Krieger, and Indra Amrithanayagam. And if you'd care to unmute and show your appreciation, I know Thank they you. would. Thank you. 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 Important reading Thank today. You. Thank you for sharing, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Very heartfelt and very mm, right in the gut. Yes, we seek here to, as I said, curate with some mindfulness when we put the readings together. And I wanna thank, uh, I, I loved this trio today. I, I felt they would work very, very well together. And, and uh, as we moved through their themes and, and poetry, uh, you know, I felt that sense that they were working in concert with each other well. Um, so I appreciate I appreciate the three voices today of Sarah, Don, and Indran. And of course, appreciate all of you for being with us today with slight apologies for daylight savings time that may have altered some of your clocks. We tried to get the word out because we knew it might wreak a little havoc um, with those of you not in, um, not here in the States. And we'll try to be a little more mindful of that next year at this time. Uh, it wreaks havoc with our uh, circadian rhythms as well. <laughs> so I believe next week we'll all be on the same clock again, but we'll pay attention to how that emerges. And speaking of next week, <clears throat> I wanna remind all of you that we, we have our weekly readings with our members here in the Zoom Poetry Studio every Sunday. It's 12 Pacific, uh, 3 p.m. 
Eastern. Usually that's eight o'clock over in Ireland and UK, uh, but this week it began at seven because of daylight savings time, that slight shift in time. And please, please do join us next week when we will be bringing the poetry of the Ukrainian poetry series from Lost Horse Press with a, a fabulous gaggle of Ukrainian poets and their translators to share their work from their latest collections but of course, um, not, not without the present and the consciousness around the, the, the issues and, the, and what we are watching unfold, what we get to see on TV or on our screens, on our computer screens, whether we care or what we read in the news, we'll be hearing it first from the poets next week. I want to just mention a couple of readings upcoming this upcoming week as well. There's there's a there's a number of them that I just like to highlight. In just a few hours, you can join 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 me, co-host Sarah Susanna Case, Carolyn Wright, and Lynn McGee for the Westies Bicoastal Poets of the Pandemic and Beyond, featuring just four poets that are gonna offer a, a terrific reading, Anna Leahy, Myra Malkin, David Rigsby, and Sean Singer. That'll be at 4 p.m. Pacific, that's 7 p.m. Eastern. And it's posted on the Cultivating Voices Live page for you to register and join that reading. On Wednesday, you have opportunity to for two fantastic poetry readings, a poetry parlay out of Alaska with Sandra Clevin and her crew, Cynthia Steele, will be hosting Don Krieger for their reading series. That'll be Wednesday evening, um, Alaska time, which it will be, uh, I'm going to let them post the timing because I don't have all the times written down, but please be on the lookout for that reading. That's going to be, uh, you can get more of a, a, an even deeper sense of when danger is past, who remembers from Don and also hear about Don's poet of influence. And there is a live open mic that follows, um, that follows the reading. Also on quintessential listening, Michael Anthony Ingram will be hosting this week, um, Women in Poetry, a special edition of quintessential listening on Blogspot Radio. That'll be Wednesday evening. That's 8 p.m. Eastern time. And I'd be very remiss if I didn't uh, give a shout out to one of my favorite reading series always uh, has been since the pandemic. Um, if you care to travel over to Ireland, to Limerick, Ireland, where, and Cork, where the two fabulous hosts, Dora Safer and Lauren Cavanaugh host Lime Square Poetry, that is 8 p.m. Ireland. And for us in the States, that'd be three o'clock Eastern and 12 Pacific. Join them on Thursday evening or afternoon, wherever you hail from. Well, I'm joining you hailing today from Olympia, Washington. Uh, Sandy Yanone, your host of Cultivating Voices Live Poetry. Thank you, everybody who's joined us live here in our Zoom poetry room as well as those of you who are watching on Zoom and will watch the recordings. I hope to see you sometime this week at another reading. And as I always end the readings, um, please stay safe, take very good care 
of your beloveds. Um, be thinking of be thinking of those in the world and in your communities that need our support. And of course, do what you always do. Keep writing. Have a great week. And I look forward to seeing you all next Sunday. Ha, 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 ha.